Terry Hussain here on the founding team, VP of Technical Sales at Orem. Welcome to the Math of Sales Calculator. So what we've created here is really for revenue leaders as well as SDRs to understand at a very high level how to predict and influence your pipeline as well as the revenue outcomes. Now, one of the things that a, a person or an organization will go through is trying to understand using analytics you know, how can they forecast? How can they take actionable insight? These are the things that are super important, but many organizations do poorly. And out of the gate, it's because they usually go too complicated, you know, too fast. So what we have here is a simple calculator that is at a high level, right? It can get incredibly complex. And there's so many ways that you can make this complex, but we'll start very high to first, A, understand your revenue and pipeline goals. Then understand your revenue stats. And then, of course, your KPIs, which you know, many organizations uh, have a hate-love relationship with KPIs. They either say, you know, KPIs are the way, or they say, you know, throw KPIs out. Outcomes are all that matter. At the end of the day, you need to measure your, act your activity so you can predict where you're going. And that's what we're going to go over. And to give you context on why we actually created this is because many of our customers and prospective customers, when they looked at Orem's acceleration, they thought that making $1,000 a day was the way to go. Whereas we push back on that. We believe in a very strategic model where you're increasing your capacity overall without sacrificing quality. Only then can you master both quantity and quality at scale. So for them to understand that, they need to know that reinvesting the time savings from automation, whether it's Orem or any platform that you buy, any automation that you instill in your tech stack, the time that you get back needs to go to the places that do not scale. And if you don't understand what those are and you don't know the numbers, then like many organizations, and you know, I might be preaching to the choir sometimes, you've deployed a ton of automation but for some reason, you're not seeing the numbers explode. You're not seeing the 3x, 10x, 100x returns that all these vendors are claiming. And part of that is understanding your math of sales. So let's jump into this report. So the first thing that we want to do is understand what are our revenue goals? So I'm going to put in 1.5 million as an example. Uh, and let's say that this quarter, I'm actually looking to double my revenue. Now, from a pipeline perspective, the rule of thumb has always been around 3x, 4x. If in this current environment, uh, you know, no longer are we swimming in free money from low interest rates, uh, many people are shooting well beyond that. Um, I've seen 5x, 10x. I'm going to shoot for, you know, 10x pipeline. I want absolute certainty that we're going to have enough pipeline to hit the number. So that's a lot of pipeline. Right. Um, so let's get into the next step over here. After this, we want to look at how many reps do we have? So today, if I'm trying to hit 3 million, you know, in a quarter, and maybe you know, an AE is typically bringing in 150 to 200 K, I think it's fair to say that, you know, you should have at least six to 12 reps. Let's say some of them are ramping uh, and I'm growing my team. This is pretty standard. I'm going to go ahead and put 20 reps in. And then the next is your meeting booked to qualified opportunity. So what this means is clearly we delineate between the meetings that occur and your booking, as well as what are you putting into your pipeline? The goal here, again, is not to get too complicated. If your meetings are opportunities, great. However, in your math of sales, are you looking at that first interaction where you meet with that prospective client? and you determine whether you want to move forward or not. That is by far the easiest way to define this and understand your ratio. So typical in B2B, uh, you typically see anywhere from 60 to 80%. I'm going to put 80% in. And then average contract value. Let's say we're selling a pretty decently sized contract here at 50K. And again, ACV is going to be your customers divided by you know, the, or, you know, the value of your ARR divided by your customers is the easiest way to understand ACV. Um, or you look at all your contracts, right, across the money that you brought in and calculate it that way. 
Average close rate, this is usually based off your opportunities. So this is not from meeting. So again, however you want to define this. If you don't know this answer, just put 100%. Understand that you can always come back and redo this. Uh, average close rates in B2B SaaS especially are typically anywhere from 10 to 20%. Um, I'm going to put in 15. And the last is call steps in sequence. So if you're using a sequencer, the best thing to do here is just kind of look at what are the top sequences your reps are using and how many call steps do they have? You know, the idea here is that what are the levers that we can pull in order to increase capacity? And in general, if I look at customers of ours before they you know, came on, they're typically making 40 to 50 calls. Uh, they often have very few call steps, maybe four to six. So I'll use four to be conservative. And then from here, I'm going to hit next step. Now, before we move on, the last thing is the KPIs. So this is super important. The first thing you wanna look at is how many prospects are being added or worked? Do you track this today? If you don't, definitely a key area. Not only should you look at prospects, but you should also look at accounts. And many organizations have a good rule of thumb, like three to five accounts per prospect or uh, per account, like three to five, I'm sorry, three to five prospects per account, excuse me. Um, and they, they'll layer that into how they're attacking the market. And so in this case, uh, many reps are adding 10, 20, 30 a day. If you're being strategic, like our reps, or you're writing personalized emails, or doing a lot of deep account research, you're enriching with as much data as possible, both automated and manual, uh, we're usually aiming to around 15 to 25. I'll put 15 to be conservative here, especially if these are full cycle AEs. And then dials, in general, the average, again, before people come to us is hovering around 30 to 40. So I'll put 40 in as a general average. Connects. So how we define connects is speaking to the target prospect. If you do not have this definition today, it is highly advised that you follow that definition to understand what is the true quality of the data that you're calling on. So this does not mean that anyone picking up the phone is a connect. That is a, a, a bad practice that does not allow you to actually scale effectively and understand when you're actually speaking to a human or not, unless you actually listen to every call your rep is making, which, you know, is technically impossible for most people. So for connects, we're going to define it that way. I'm going to say that I am pretty decent. I have a, you know, anywhere from an eight to 10% connect rate. Um, so you know, maybe I'm talking to three people just under 8%. That's pretty good for most organizations. Uh, and then the next thing is all meetings. Key point here is we're looking at all meetings initially. If you have an outbound SDR team, inbound SDR team, you might split this up in the calculator and look specifically at those meetings. But I think the easiest thing to initially do for most organizations, whether they're SDRs or AEs, is look at all meetings, which includes inbound. The reason why is to give you one example, Imagine you have an opportunity that was booked by an SDR. Timing was off. Your AE closed, lost it. Six months later, that person pings your AE or the AE follows up. The timing is right. They create a new opportunity and new meeting. That closes. The SDR or whoever, however you are attributing the meetings to this calculator is going to be lost if you're that granular. And I'm sure if you're listening to this, that that's never happened in the history of sales in your organization. Um, hopefully you can, you can sense the sarcasm. Uh, so all meetings is the way to go. I know that this is a, a prickly subject, but this is the way that you want to begin. You can always get more granular later. So with all meetings, what I'm going to do in here is saying, all right, well, we're looking at an average per day. Uh, I really want my reps booking about a meeting per day, but unfortunately they're at you know 0.6 right now. If I was to do the math, uh, across all my reps. Uh, and generally speaking, you know, if I look at my dispositions, meetings by phone, you know, that's how I would get that number. Again, the easiest thing to do if meetings for from phone, again, not to get too granular and get too crazy, is just to look at your call dispositions for your meeting book disposition over this time frame, and then divide it by the number of reps. So once we have this, I have my summary. So I can look at what happened last quarter, right? I had 6.7X 6 
And I know maybe that last quarter we hit our numbers, but maybe it was just barely. I really want to get 10x, right? That is a, a golden number that for many organizations, even with uh, really bad math conversion, typically can you know hit their number. So with 20 SDRs on the team, I'm looking at $40 a day, 15 prospects added per day into our sequences, roughly getting about three connects and 0.6 meetings, a third of which... Point two is on the phone per day. All right. So this summary here is just to do a gut check, make sure this all looks good and nothing's too funky. All right. Everything looks good to me. Looks accurate. So now I'm going to hit get results. So right now it's saying that my status quo, everything associated is, you know, 30 million. So it's saying that if I change nothing, I'm going to hit my, my goal. Now, one thing that I can do here is saying, all right, well, I've, of course, lined this up perfectly for this math uh, to show you how we can go well above this because I want to crush it, right? So this is, if things stay the same, I'll hit my goal, but there's no room for error. And so because we're imperfect beings, I want to make sure that I really remove the risk here. So you have two ways of really attacking your math of sales to begin with, without, with this sort of activity. The biggest levers is capacity, which is the accounts and prospects you are actively working. And then call tasks. Another way of thinking about that is just the number of calls you have in a sequence. And you might think about emails, right? Social, all that. Yes, that's not included typically because emails are automated. In most cases, you may have one or two manual emails in your process. But again, we're not trying to get too complicated here. So I'm gonna first play with prospecting. If I'm not making any more calls and I'm adding you know, just five more prospects a day, and I go down the math, now I'm adding 20. Naturally, I'm gonna have more calls because I have more prospects. And then as we're going down the list, since everything is remaining the same here, you'll see that in general, a 33% increase in overall prospecting will lead to a linear increase in the PG goal. And this is pretty standard. Um, the easiest way to think about it is if you doubled all your numbers, if everything remained the same conversion wise, you should see double the output. It's that simple. But a lot of people miss this aspect because they un they don't know how can they get to five more, right? So that's where the automation aspect comes in. With Orem, again, or any system that delivers automation, it could be outreach, Apollo, it could be automating any part of the stack. If you're able to co take that back into activity and maintain the same quality, you can get linear outputs. So now that we've looked at prospecting, Let's look at call tasks. So with call tasks, what many organizations make a mistake of is thinking that there is a linear increase in the call out, or in the outcomes, although you've increased call tasks by that X amount. So what do I mean? So if I increase call tasks by two, and remember we were at four before, I've increased my overall calls by 50%. And you can see that the dials per day is 60. Now, what we've done here, and again, this is rough math. There's a lot of ways to pick, pick this apart, but at a very high level, you're calling the same prospects more often. In any sequence, you can go look at it today. Every call that you make, you'll see typically a drop in connect rate. So as you make more calls against the same prospect, you'll see a lower, you'll see a lower conversion. So yes, you're gonna get more connects but it's the same people. And a quick way to logically assume this is imagine someone, you calling someone a thousand times. The rep that makes a thousand dials across many accounts and prospects is gonna have far greater outcomes than calling one person a thousand times. And so what we're showing here at a very high level again, is that the increases aren't linear, but they're still significant. So, Imagine now that I have automation where I can make these 60 calls a day in a matter of minutes. I can say, all right, well, rep, you were spending 60 to 90 minutes to make these calls before. Now you're spending five or 10 minutes. 
can you take back the 50-ish minutes that we saved you and just add in five more prospects? By doing that, I can see that not only again, do I have this 33% increase, but I can take advantage of the calls as well. So over here, we'll have the combined outcomes. And this is pretty realistic, right? We're not drastically increasing KPIs. So the goal here of the math of sales is to help teams understand what are the incremental KPIs that you can augment in order to get significantly different outcomes. And quite frankly, this is where many organizations aim to get too complicated and they get lost in this fog of war versus backing up and just looking at the raw KPIs they have. And yes, if you're better at your emails, you don't need as many prospects to get replies. If your data is better, you don't need as many call tasks to get connects. But these ifs and whens, that will happen. What can you change now? And how can you augment your KPIs to hit that next level outcome in your current status quo? If these numbers, if you're playing around these numbers and you need to significantly increase outcomes here and there, then yes, that's a little bit of a red flag. Maybe you should look at what can automate that. If you need to increase prospecting by 10X, then you should automate prospecting. If you need to increase the amount of calls you're making by 100 to 200 uh, percent, then you need to, you know, increase in call automation. Whatever this may be, right? So this will also help you elucidate where those pain points are. So at a high level, math the sales. If I'm at 30 million and nothing changes, and I make zero mistakes, I hit my number. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to make very small increases to my overall KPIs, and that will put me in a state where I'm almost guaranteed to hit my number. At the end of this, we are going to show you what the impact is. So here we have a 33% increase in prospecting and adding two more call tasks. Together that generates an additional 15 million in pipeline, which is 50% over my goal. And do these KPIs seem reasonable? And then this last question is one that can only be answered by your organization, but coming up with KPIs that are not consistent, scalable, and repeatable is just going to be a losing battle. You don't want to be the sales manager that comes out swinging saying, we're going to make $3,000 a day and add 10,000 prospects a month when you're already, when you're only at a, you're only at one tenth of that, Right. You want to make sure that this is something is that is consistent, doable, and scalable week after week, month after month, you know, year after year. And you can always scale this as you add more automation. So hopefully this walkthrough was helpful, especially with the context. Please give this a try today. And we wish you the best in hitting your numbers.